the crown Drifting when blows through your town Huddlers better buckle down Cause it's the final countdown Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, camera number two, and wishing you a happy and healthy and maybe even profitable start to this uh, Sunday morning over here from a very snowy and absolutely frigid Helsinki, Finland. And as always, wish you well because it is a Sunday and that means we got to talk about long term analysis. And I don't, and, and we will talk about long term analysis on Bitcoin, of course, but I do want to put the focus actually on traditional marks as well because typically things move together and there are some very, 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 very interesting things going on, which I want to uh, highlight during this. Anyways, before we get into that, I do want to also make an announcement that if you are in the TA program, you are going to be receiving about eight to 10 hours of more content <laughs> relatively soon. And that is because I'm, I'll be releasing a new program uh, in the next week or two, so maybe perhaps somewhere sometime around the um, around the two year anniversary of this cave, which is a massive thank you from me to you as just this community has been absolutely fucking amazing. And, um, and that program is gonna be completely focused on bringing up complete beginners. And that means that if you like, you know, if you've been around this channel for like a month or two by now, that ain't you, you're probably already above that level, but complete beginners to an intermediary level. So I figured if someone already in the TA program as it is, which is kind of like, I look at it as kind of like my life's work and in like a more advanced level, that's just going to be added for you because I don't really see the need to like do that over again, but it perhaps could tie up some loose ends and hopefully just add some value in some way. So keep an eye out for that. I'll be making more announcements uh, with it um, as time goes on. And um, with all of that said, I would like to take a second to wish you the best of the best and the happiest of the happiest because well, why the fuck not, man? <laughs> it's like, what else can you say to that? Just wish people well because it'd be, just be better for the world, especially when this coronavirus is kicking uh, a lot of people's asses. So with that said, let's get into the live scene right now and talk about the Crown Trading app, which can be found at app.crowntrading.net and is 100% free. And the journaling function is going to be coming uh, in less than a week now. So uh, so keep an eye out for that. Anyways, uh, uh, the highlight here is on the open interest, which is still right around 1.2 billion. That's billion with a B. And it has gone down just a little bit from uh, from. Uh, from yesterday what i will oh that also reminds me to say we will actually be constructing um a whole chart a whole chart for the open interest over time because i haven't been able to find one which would be just massively helpful for myself once again anyways um, that's going to tie into the analysis. So keep that number in your mind as we go on over here into traditional markets now. So starting off with SPY, which is the major bores for, uh, for the American markets and, you know, more or less represents the world markets in general. Of course, you know, every country is going to have their, you know, their major index or indice. Um, and I'm just going to focus on, uh, for, uh, SPY for right now, but you know, more or less, they're all going to look in some way a variation of this. So what really speaks to me after having some time to analyze, uh, Friday's close and this whole week of death and destruction. I do think that we are probably putting in some major lows right here. I do not think that I, I or sorry, I do think that um, most of the damage has been done. Perhaps we do come down and maybe set in a slightly lower low, perhaps somewhere right around 275 ish region and create some divergence on perhaps a daily or a weekly. That would be an obvious buy. But I do think that again, most of the damage has been done. We had a pretty damn good close on Friday, looking at the 377, regaining it just in the last 15 minutes, which tells me that we probably are going to at the very least try another rally up this week somewhere right around like 305 to 310 ish region and any sort of you know any sort of a daily deal to close back above those regions and i would be short medium not necessarily long-term bullish but short and medium term bullish for you know for a move back up to this region over here extended throughout the week or, or month or whatever it ends up being and then just sit for it to slowly kind of you know drag its feet through and uh, and come out on top but i want to put the the highlight here on the volume that was done on friday this was a daily dildo that did almost 43 million 43 fucking million and most of that was actually done on the uh, on the closing um, and uh, and to put that in perspective, this is way more volume than we did on even just the last major low that was put in in December 2018. If you remember that, like Christmas Christmas destruction just a couple of years ago, and then before that, um, on this major spike down here in February 2018, which is where we saw Bitcoin and traditional marks come down almost in in, in like full lockstep um, from Bitcoin 20,000 to 6,000 right there. Anyways, to put this in, to put this into further perspective, point it out a little bit further, we do see comparable volume to what we saw on Friday, to what we saw on over here on the last major correct. Well, actually, this was a pretty major correction right here. But this one also a nice correction as well, both to the point, both both to the tune of about like 10 to 15 percent. 
and very, very comparable right here. Like I said, it could come back down, you know, grind out the lows, but I would be looking at that as likely a long-term opportunity as you're probably gonna get some divergence plays because, well, right now the daily, the daily oscillators are so beat up that it, it's not gonna take all that much if it does come back down. And then, you know, dragging out a little bit further, the only, the only, um, the only areas that I can that I can look at from a historical point that actually do have more spikes in volume is coming back over here in January or sorry August June uh, sorry June July August of 2011. I was actually trading during this time and I do remember this one and this one was pretty damn intense as well. But same thing, major spike on volume, lows being put in. Yes, we do come back down a little bit further, but that is at the point when we do create some very obvious divergence between this point and this point. If you can zero in on that, um, and if we wanted to take that just a step further. And go back to 2008 like the last major uh, collapse in the markets well that would be right in over here now of course this was a little bit of a more special um uh, more special uh, what's it called uh, scenario uh, with it with with like actual issues with the world economic just just the way that everyone everything was constructed um you know the you know the red getting pulled out but again, uh, that one actually does overshadow what we did this past week. But on a daily basis, it is still actually comparable. Unfortunately, we can't go that far back, but I do remember. Anyways, more importantly right now, I do think that, uh, again, short term, medium term, we probably do rally up here. And, uh, and, and, and you know, if you do see a rejection, maybe around 310 or some or, or 315, and it comes back down, I would look for a divergence to be, for, uh, to be created somewhere between about 275 and 280 ish. And that's probably going to be the low. Um, I would only get bearish on traditional markets like, like legit legitimately bearish if we see a weekly close, weekly open and close really below the 200 simple or 200 X benchmark average right here, which are actually significantly lower right around 265 region. So you can't imagine that if, uh, if, if traditional markets do rally up a little bit here, I would be looking for, and, 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 and sorry, if they do rally up here and then the rally fails and they come back down, you'd imagine that these moving averages are going to be pulled up into that 275 region, you know, over the next month or so. So keep your eyes out on that. Um, uh, but, uh, but, but majority speaking, I want to say, and I want to be on the record as saying that uh, I do think that most likely the lows are in. Anyways, um, at the very least for short, medium term, very, 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 very likely. Maybe Monday opens up, you know, tries a little bit of a downside move as the people over the weekend who panic uh, sell. But, uh, but that should turn around either later on Monday or Tuesday. Anyways, uh, looking at it right now, um, the reason why this is even relevant to Bitcoin is because as we've been showing for the past like fucking half a year now, uh, Bitcoin and traditional markets are incredibly correlated on the macro. And when we're looking at the macro, we're looking at timeframes like weekly, monthly, and well, we can't really go higher than that because Bitcoin doesn't have too much history. But what I mean to put the focus on is that when we're talking about, you know, macro up cycles and macro down cycles and macro lows being put in, that should be relevant to both these assets as far as the long term goes. And looking at this right here, again, is confirming once again, the correlation coefficient showing the correlation between Bitcoin moves or sorry, Bitcoin direction and spy direction is not 0.59, which is pretty fucking high. I mean, to put in perspective, that is that, you know, that I, I, I don't really know too many other things that have that strong of a correlation with Bitcoin that aren't like in the cryptocurrency landscape to begin with. But more importantly, what further confirms this is the R squared right here, which is measuring the essentially like it's it's draw, it's it's making a regression of how much this actually uh, sorry, how much the correlation coefficient actually fits. And as you can see, it's a not 0.68, which is incredibly high. That obviously means nothing without context. I'll put it. Uh, let's put it into context and make a correlation between or sorry, do the same thing with gold and see what its R squared looks like. And you can see the correlation coefficient is actually about the same not 0.6 but the r squared how good of that how good that actually fits over time not very good it's literally less than half of what we see on spy so what can we expect here i expect bitcoin to essentially follow and mimic and mirror the traditional markets moves and i do think that i and and just like i think uh, traditional marks have probably put in a major uh, low or, or 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 at the very least very close to it i think that gold is actually put in a major high. The rejection that we saw on Friday was absolutely catastrophic and perhaps the worst thing that could have happened to gold um, uh, you know, on uh, on not just a weekly closing basis, but also the monthly closing basis as well. It was like literally the scenario that I was looking for that would negate everything else that it had done the month prior. So with that in mind and keeping in mind that I do think SPY has likely bottomed here, might turn it back down a little bit, but I look for a divergence play and, and that's gonna be the next low. Let's go now look at Bitcoin and see how this matches up because Bitcoin is once again in limbo and we are in trouble here, especially on the daily. So I do think that Bitcoin does 
does have a little bit lower to go here. We closed well below the 200 simple yesterday, and not only just the 200 simple, but also the 200 X benchmark average as well. And we're going to have a chance today to both open and close below the 200 X benchmark average, which will be had and on any sort of a daily total closure below 8600. That should be good enough for continuation this coming week down to 8150, 8200ish region, of which I would look for Bitcoin to have another bounce. Keeping in mind that SPY probably has put in a low here, and if not, it might come back down a little bit lower, and that should be the low, maybe like 10, 15 bucks, a little bit lower than where we closed on Friday. Um, you know, does that correlate with this area right here? I do think that there is probably a strong likelihood of that. So I would at the very least look for a short and medium term major bounce from this region from about 8150, maybe back up somewhere, you know, somewhere around the 200 simple perhaps. Um, which wouldn't be asking for all that much, which is uh, currently trading 8750-ish region and crawling itself lower over time. Um, but uh, but if that area does fail, then I would be looking for uh, you know I I I would be looking for Bitcoin to come back down to the seven uh, it's like what is this like 7250 to 7500 base, which is going to be most easily had on the weekly, and that should be the bottom area as well. And that would probably correlate with spy coming back down and making like a slightly lower low than what we currently have at about 285, maybe 275, 270-ish region. And that I would, you know, that I would look forward to operate as a major uh, macro low, um, alongside Bitcoin perhaps coming back down to the uh, 7600 to 7500 ish region, which is essentially where we put in the last little uh, small accumulation phase before that before that last reversal that we saw from 7000 or 6500 all the way to uh, 10 and a half thousand. So pretty damn good. Now that also does mean that if Bitcoin does break this region, I'd be looking for it to come back down significantly further. Um, that's something that we probably don't want to talk about too much right now because uh, don't want to piss off. The moon boys too much but keep in mind that we did already see both the weekly and monthly close for cmes coming into friday we saw them or we're, we're or we did see the the monthly close for spot price action yesterday night so let's actually match these up now and see how well that they did so cmes told you that we were likely to close below the 21 exponential moon average and and 10 simple that or, or sorry on, you know on the weekly that's already been confirmed on cmes but let's actually go to the monthly for a second here i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself whoops that's a buy monthly we ain't we ain't that gay for ta let's go to the let's go to the regular monthly and uh and it did confirm a close below the 10 simple right here, which does tell me that we're probably going to uh, we're probably going to try to base around, you know, low 8000 at the very least once again. And what do we see on or sorry, what do we see on spot markets for Bitcoin? Well, confirmed confirmed monthly close below the 10 simple, which is now curling down and getting uh, after, you know, have, after having a nice positive slope going flat right on over here. So I would look at this as any, uh, you know, as indicative that any sort of a move back up to like 8900, 8950 probably does get pushed back. Um, and I'd be looking for us to probably, you know, I mean, <laughs> that 21 X benchmark moon average is actually coming in all the way down at about 7500. So. I'm not necessarily saying that's going to get there for sure. Uh, still has to chew through 8150-ish region, but um, it certainly is within the cards as uh, we already saw that confirmed on CMEs. So we can most likely make the inference that we're going to see the weekly close in a similar posture to what we saw on CMEs as well. And if it closes anywhere below about 8700, which is uh, 50 bucks below the 21 exponential moon average right now, I do think that there's a pretty damn strong probability that we will, or we can look at probabilities later before Bali yells at me. But um, but uh, but you know, I'd I'd, I'd say that. The that the likelihood that we see at the very least 8150 increases significantly and probably even 7500 longer term we're going to also see weekly momentum also just turn back down weekly stokes will cross down if they do close here or lower which remember cmes have already closed for the week they close at 8700 and they do have about a 50 dollars price premium on them although that should be completely dissipated by the time that they open up uh, later tonight at 5 p.m eastern time looking at the weekly rsi as well we have broken the exponential and remember that's already been confirmed on cme so i just want to show that you know this is relevant especially for the people listening out there who actually make it look who actually make an effort to listen you know that these things really do make uh, do mean quite a bit to myself for the crypto uh moon boys out there who want this thing to not be correlated because bitcoin hedge and it was created during the recession well doesn't really seem to be reality right now could change in the future but as of right now this asset is incredibly immature and new and unlikely to work like that it still works like a risk on asset i don't really see I, I listen if this coronavirus shit gets really really serious i ain't gonna be buying bitcoin with it because you can't really buy anything with bitcoin unfortunately right now again probably does change in the future but this could be well and far away um so yeah looking at this right here if we do close below the t uh especially the 21 x benchmark average you know i do think we probably do have another try back up towards like 88 maybe 8900 
um, but I'd be looking for that to get rejected and I'd be overall uh, medium and long-term bearish as long as below the 21 looking probably at the very least for 81.50 get hit. I do think that there will be a bounce there, but if that bounce fails, I'd be looking for 7,500-ish region, maybe all the way down to 7,000. We'll kind of see that see that one as it as it comes. But all these you know all these things turning down at the same time is not good. I will say this though about the weekly RSI. There's a couple of different things going on here, but most importantly. I look at this, this is actually so much more obvious on CMEs, and this is why I think that it's just so, so, just such an easier chart to read. You do see a clear and obvious rejection of the bullish control zone on CME RSI, and we ha also have lost the exponential as well. What I'm looking for to happen is we're probably gonna come all the way back down here and base upon the same region that we saw from, uh, from late 2019, and that's likely going to be a good area, and you can imagine that we, at that point, we likely would be making perhaps some, some divergence as well. So if Bitcoin does come back down of this region here i would look at that as likely a long-term opportunity you could look at this as potential accumulation if it does start to flatten out there as well so that would be again a very very good long-term basing signal for the long-term hodlers out there for the long-term well hodlers don't give a fuck about it but long-term traders you know who are looking to hold positions for months at a time maybe even years at a time that's what i'd be looking for in accordance with spy also confirming macro lows as well which i think is very likely there and if not probably comes down a little bit lower gets that divergence play and then we play it out and you're probably going to see Bitcoin do something very, very similar within this low $7,000 region right here. Okay, so I've just spoken a whole shit ton about very experimental ideas on the higher term timeframes. Let's go down to the lower term timeframes now and, and flush this out a little bit further. Okay, so looking at the four hour, let's actually go to a fresh chart. Um, this is uh, this is GDAX. Looking at a four hour right here, we just have we just have a downtrend continue uh, continuing itself. We have the or sorry, we have the death cross on the four hour as well. Let me actually take everything else off except for those two guys. Or actually, I'll leave the twenty one on there too because I do like that one. It's a nice one. Anyways. Um, I just want to show once again, as we did yesterday, that uh, anytime we have the golden cross or death cross on the four hour, even in counter trend macro cycles, the failed signals still get some pretty good, you know, some pretty good price action. So this this signal over here between the green and the purple, the 55 and the 200, obviously very, very good get, getting all the price action from 73.50 to, to 10 and a half thousand. That's not what I want to focus on. I want to find counter trend signals to, uh, sorry, counter trend signals that ended up failing, you know, to produce real reversals, but did still get a little bit of airtime. So we do have an example right here. Um, where this one does give you a buy signal right here. And again, it's counter to the macro trend, which was down on a weekly, still gives you about 10 and percent to the upside um, from, you know, from that signal given. Then we have, uh, we have one failed signal right here, counter to the macro trend tells you to buy right here. We do end up getting about 16, 16% uh, plus to the upside. Pretty damn good. Once again, then this signal was a phenomenal one over here, leads us all the way up from like 3,500 to 14,000. So let's not focus on that. Then we go back to the last bear market cycle in 2018 so we have plenty of failed uh, golden crosses but even in all these failed golden crosses still produced some pretty nice uh, percentage plays this one about a little bit uh, under 10 percent from from signal given to next major high uh, this one at about 16 and three quarters percent from signal given to next major high uh, this one over here about uh, 25 percent from signal given to next major high uh, this one over here again another failed one but uh, okay give it to me Let's see, 12.5% uh, from uh, from signal given to next major high. And then we basically were golden cross the whole way through on the last markets, you know, the last bull mark cycle. So don't need to focus on it all that much. Anyways, I just want to show that even in the failed signals, we're still talking about, you know, double digit percentage uh, gains in that same direction for the cross even if they do end up failing. And in this point right here, you know, we get the we get the signal right here when Bitcoin's trading a little bit below 9,000. If we were to just shave off 10% from that price action, where that put us down around? Well, quite literally right around about 8,100, 8,150-ish region, which is where I do think Bitcoin likely does test around. And I do think that it likely does, um, likely does bounce there. That's also gonna be uh, consistent with the volume profile showing some very interesting action within this region as well. You do see some higher value nodes being shoved right in this, uh, right in this region, in fact, we do see the point of control is actually not too far below there. Let's actually go to a daily really, really quick and see what the uh, what the higher time frames would suggest. And yes, indeed, you see it's it's a it's a lot more obvious around the eighty one fifty ish region. Oops, let me just zoom in a little bit more. There we go. 
um, but you do see some activity in this region, which is relevant to all like these stops that we've had on the way up and down. Uh, and the point of control obviously coming down around 7150-ish region, but we'll just not focus on that right now and more so focus on, uh, on, on you know, level by level. So going level by level here, obviously, you know, I can always be wrong, but with the way that the lower time frame oscillators are starting to turn down once again, I do think that Bitcoin probably does get another drive to the downside. We got four hour stokes headed down. We got three hour stokes headed down, two hour stokes uh, already down, hourly stokes uh, down as well. The trend is down on all time frames uh, up to a daily, I believe now, uh, or sorry, the daily trend is also down as well, but, uh, but uh, is, you know, is, is it a two day as well? Um, yeah, we have lower high and lower low. Yep. Okay, we do. What about a three day? Do we have a downtrend on a three day? We have lower high and lower lows as well. Yes, we do. Okay, cool. So, well, not so cool for the hodlers out there, but we're traders here. So fuck your hodler. Anyways, just kidding. Just kidding. We love hodlers, right? Bitcoin to the moon, Bitcoin to fucking 200 billion kajillion, and you never have to do another thing in your goddamn life. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Again, no. Um, so yeah. Uh, what ha like what what would prove me wrong not prove me wrong but what what would make me change my opinion on this price action right here well as you can see it is basically a descending triangle on the lows and with a descending triangle we could make some some areas of interest here sorry let me get uh, rid of that trend line let's do some like this and let's do some like this drawing out our descending tr uh, triangle um, and and that does look that does look about right to me volume signature, volume signature on this is correct yes i am using wicks here but i'm sure that if i use like a six hour or if i use like a two hour or something something rather it should 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 be holding in there more importantly this would tell me that i would be wrong on this read if and only if bitcoin trades back above about 8800 and creates a higher high above this little uh, stutter step right here even then though it doesn't really do all that much as we've been saying for the last few days things things don't really change for bitcoin um even at 8950 although if bitcoin does start closing two hour or four hour dildos above 8950 i would look for a move to the next major area at about 9150 to 9200 right around here which is coming back from this prior consolidation sorry uh, re referencing this structure right here and that's where things actually can change. So I am sticking with what I've been saying for you know for the last few weeks. I you know uh, my my buy switched to bearish below uh, 9950, 9600, and now we can move down that point of failure to this 9150 to 9200 ish level. If that means that if Bitcoin gets back above there, I would essentially look at this as an overall bear trap, and I and I'd be looking for this to have a very quick move back up to about uh, 9550 and probably beyond back to the five digits after that, after a small pullback there, or you know maybe not small, but uh, but you know, yeah, you know, after uh, you know, after a short-term pullback back here. So, anyways, that's the only way that I really changed my opinion on this. For now, I do think that Bitcoin has more downside to go, as it does create a uh, descending triangle, basically redistribution pattern on the lows, and we can make a measure move off this as well. Which, what, where is this pointed towards? Oh no! Oh no! It might just be down towards that next 8150-ish to 8200-ish target right here, which is perfectly shown by this. We should put in a nice blue box territory, something like this. Um, down around this region so that's also consistent with uh that's also consistent with uh the daily 377 which i don't believe i showed or do you even have a yes i do have my charts right now so yeah it's right right around here which is by the way actually where just the traditional markets bottomed out as well not saying that they have to bottom out on the same exact moving averages um, but you can see that it, it regained it i like the last 10 to 15 minutes on friday um, so i would put a significant uh moniker on that region you know monitoring it going forwards and you know if bitcoin does trade below it i'd be looking for it to probably regain it relatively relatively quickly. Um, so if Bitcoin does trade into like the middle of the 7,000s, still, you know, I'd, I'd use this as kind of like a long-term decider. Um, on top of that, we do have negative slopes on all major moving averages here. We do have a very nasty cross between the red 10 simple and the yellow 21, although it's not a perfect cross either. Um, uh, I think the 12 hour 21 and 55 is a little bit better, although still not perfect either. But more importantly, I want to talk about this for a second. So if you're in the TA program, I want to, as always, um, you know, follow up on the program and give examples when we see it in, re in real price action. So you see this cross right here. This is the cross that we speak about a lot in the, uh, in the exponential moon average um, video. And when you see a cross like this, which is a bearish cross, of course, but it is below the actual breakdown point of this major consolidation right here, which was an actual bias change as well. Remember, 
remember the last three weeks, I was bullish as long as Bitcoin was above 9,600, but switches immediately when Bitcoin breaks 9,600 on a higher time frame. That happened in these two moving averages crossing to the downside below that region really speaks towards a long-term, well, not necessarily long-term, but medium-term momentum because we are using a 12-hour here below that region. So that is a humongous pivot point on the market going onwards and forwards here. And as these two moving averages get more and more divergence away from each other, that just means that this downside, the this downside break is actually just strengthening um, as time goes on. So I would put a special, um, you know, a special note on that. And that's really all I have to say about that right now. So you, we do see the yellow 21 expense moving average now getting down down towards our next major pivot, which would be 9150, which to me, if Bitcoin gets back above there, probably does probably does flip around to being bullish and this is gonna be a massive bear trap and we can talk about five digits again in, in glory times. But for right now, not so much. Um, and uh, and as it stands, you know, Bitcoin creating a descending triangle on the lows, not necessarily the picture of health and fitness as all lower time frame momentum oscillators are angled down once again. I'm sure that people are gonna be saying, but crown, we have bullish divergence. Well, Bullish divergence usually doesn't look like this. Um, we will be creating some bullish divergence, even on some time frames that really do matter, but uh, that would also imply that we're gonna break to the downside here. Um, if we do break to the downside, measure move does does bring this down to about 8150, 8200-ish region. Um, anyways, looking at our medium time frame momentum oscillators, we do see that 12-hour stokes have once again opened to the downside. I am very apprehensive here though, because I do think that Bitcoin's setting up for a big bounce. It, it either comes from about 8550 or 8150-ish region, um, but we can see that historically speaking, anytime that the 12 hour stokes have gotten down into this region uh, with my settings have it's it's usually the lows. We're, we're you know we're usually operating off of major lows. Uh, we're talking about the 26th of, or sorry 25th of January right here. We're talking about the 16th. I mean this is the 16th of January, like literally the day after the actual 6500 low is put in. Uh, 20th of November major low as well. I'm, I'm talking about like all of these areas, like one, two, three, four. Or nope, this one was not it, but this one was. Um, and yeah, then once again we're in this region, and then of course going back a little bit further, this area right here, same sort of signal. This area right here, same sort of signal. Doesn't mean that we're gonna have like a major uh, rally or 100% or, or reversal, but definitely, or sorry, I shouldn't say definitely, but extremely likely that we do have a nice relief rally from one of those regions. And as you can see right here as well, 12 hours, uh, sorry, 12 hour RSI will very likely be creating some divergence um, as well. And perhaps even the daily, well, nah, daily is not necessarily there just yet. In fact, the daily does have a nice trend line coming in all the way from our September, uh, what is this, 2019 lows connected with our current, or sorry, um, uh, middle of November lows. Where is this coming from? Okay, yeah, th uh, this point right here and this point right here. Okay, fair enough. Um, so probably does put in like, uh, you know, pro uh, pro uh, probably does put in another drive somewhere right around here as well. Again, middle of the 7,000 if I had to guess, but uh, that would be that would be following this trend line and more importantly, creating divergence on that as well. Anyways, getting way too ahead of ourselves right now. Again, level by level, I don't really look for anything in below 8,000 until this area is broken. Of course, no shit, you know, you have to to go one by one and and again to the upside this would be immediately immediately in jeopardy if we even just tick above this last little local high that we had right here at about 8800 um again that doesn't really it's, it's kind of tricky here because it doesn't really do it for much more than that it would just kind of say that we might have something new going on and this is this might flip around to being uh to be an accumulation um it's not until above 89.50 where i start to target that move back up to about 91.50 92.00 that's where things can actually really fully and formally change once again so i look at this 91.50 ish region uh 9200ish region the same way that i looked at this uh this 9600 ish region right in over here for the bias essentially and as long as bitcoin is below there my bias on the higher or sorry the medium and higher time frames is bearish shorter term time frames are going to bounce around all the you know you know melt multiple times per day but it's the same sort of idea here so i will be holding on to that and realistically you know whoops whoops wait hey, whoa jesus christ man realistically you know take things uh, taking things one step at a time it, it would take a little bit of time to get there so can can certainly happen and we'll look at probabilities a little uh, actually we can look at probabilities right now because i'm already fucking 30 minutes into this bitch um but uh but keep keep all these areas in mind okay so cool we have 85.50 to the downside that broken on let's call it like a four hour dildo and i look for a move down here to 81.50 8200 by the same token you know if bitcoin gets above 80 what is this like 8800 the, the, uh, this little local high right here we will very likely have something new going on here and 
have to just kind of like come back probably tomorrow and, and reassess. Um, above 89.20, 89.50 on a four hour or two hour delta closure, uh, respectively. That's when we actually, or, or at least I would look at this as actionable once again for another $200, $300 move to the upside where things can change on the medium and higher time frame. So let's go look at probabilities now. And of course, this is never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I do want to show this right here and let's see how well these, these things line up. And I'll leave the um and, and and I'll leave the trend lines on. Okay, so let's go to a 12 hour perhaps. And what do we see? Okay, we see the first what well, let me actually get rid of this right here. We don't want this one right now. It's, um okay. So what is this suggesting? Well, we do see the first standard deviation is coming in to the upside, actually even above the last local high that we see on this potential descending triangle. So what is the probability that we do put in a little bit of a trap here and and, and move back to the upside, back up to like 89.50 and test that region? Quite low, uh, less than 16% chance to be, to be uh, precise. And to the bottom side, it's actually quite high. The reason being because the bottom side of the first aviation, which essentially is suggesting a range between where we are right now, which is quite literally on the precipice of that breakdown and towards the next target, essentially a little bit lower, is uh, is within like the 30% or sorry, 34% uh, um, uh, likelihood to happen here. So it's that's actually quite high um, comparatively speaking. Um, and that will obviously shift on the next closure, uh, but we're looking at around the daily dollar closure right now, which is going to drive the next sort of major piece of price action. We can take this one step further and go over here to the daily, and we can notice that uh, not only on the daily, this range is perfectly in line with that blue box territory, right down to about 8150, 8200 ish region. So again, within you know 34% chance likelihood to happen, and it wouldn't really even, you know do all that much. Uh, by the same token, to the upside, we see the first standard deviation coming in right around 8850. That is $100 lower or about $100 lower than that critical point of 89.50, where not even the medium or higher timeframes change, but only the short-term timeframes change, which would allow that potential move to 91.50, 9100-ish region, where th where then, you know, if Bitcoin starts closing higher timeframe deltas above there, very, very likely there's gonna be a massive bear trap. And we can even look at the probability for that as well for the next day's worth of price action. Remember, this is only measuring the next day's worth of price action. And that would be right here, right around the second standard deviation, which is less than a 2.5% chance that we see that happen between yes or sorry between now and, and 24 hours from now so keep keep that in your mind as um you know this this obviously will change over time but obviously the probabilities are on the downside here and uh and you know when formations kind of adding up with that and general marks are adding up with that and bitcoin's just selling down right now to like 81 or sorry 85 uh, 18 um i do think that this is more and more likely um so yeah anyways uh let's take this off for now and go back into my beautiful moving averages and get them all on there i also do want to say uh we do have a pretty catastrophic cross uh, potentially in the making here as well yellow 21 and green 55 uh on target for for each other once again as bitcoin does hint at another breakdown uh, this will only bring them closer together and longer term we've seen that this cross is pretty fucking nasty for bitcoin getting the last bullish cross right here leading up all the way from eight thousand to ten and a half so a multi thousand dollar move getting not not a cross down here but stayed all the way uh, uh bearishly crossed all the way from essentially like five a uh, little bit deep into the five digits to six and a half thousand down here then this one over here leading us all up all the way from 3,700 to 14,000. And I just want to show that this cross has less and less fake outs. So if these actually do cross, we can expect that this is this th this move is not going to be short lived. We're probably going to be spending some time uh, digging out the lows here. And then, of course, going throughout all of uh, 2018, we did have kind of like the same interplay between what we saw on the golden cross on um, on the four hour on those failed uh, on those failed attempts. Very, very similar results. But that was, again, counter trend to the, you know, to uh, to the macro trend right here we are at, once again in a macro downtrend unfortunately or sorry the the daily's in a downtrend the weekly is the weekly in a downtrend just yet the weekly is not in a downtrend just yet we're probably actually what we're probably doing on the weekly is actually like setting in a higher low somewhere you know somewhere here and that would be really really good for the long term because well then we actually have a confirmed uptrend because we did get a higher high over here above this high uh we just are likely setting in probably a higher load. That would be my main suspicion. So for macro on Bitcoin, I'm not necessarily bearish on Bitcoin macro. Macro bearish on Bitcoin would be on like a weekly close below 7,100, we'll call it, making lower lows. That That's where things start to get very, very nasty. And we can talk about, you know, price targets into the mid to low 5,000s, maybe even lower than that over time. But for right now, not really too relevant. And again, we'll go, we'll take it level by level here. So um, I don't want to get caught up in the, uh, in, in the exuberant irrationality that we see uh, all over crypto 
show YouTube, which is just fucking great. Anyways, um, okay, cool. So we spoke about all of that. Um, oh, let's go check out. Let's go check out how the monthly authors have resolved themselves as well. We do see monthly Stokes still down, but actually can actually looking like they potentially could cross back up to the upside. So Bitcoin, if Bitcoin were to bull its way back up above like ninety two hundred, that would be a pretty damn clear and obvious signal that we are going to be once again bullish. But I have to mediate that with the signal that we see on on uh, on monthly RSI, which is once again below the exponential. So this is flipped around so many times, and this is showing the importance of waiting for closures because coming in just a week before this last this uh, this last uh, this last monthly closure, just one week before, uh, this was looking really really good. But as you know, a, as a closure has revealed, um, not so good at the end of the day, unfortunately. Or at least once again, you know, it's you know, it's look, looking like more downside than than upside to me. Let's go check out the accumulation distribution indicator as well and see how this one's uh, done. Remember, keeping in mind that actually last month there was something very very interesting about it. Where where did it go? There it is. Um, uh, there's something very remember. Oh my God, this this is this is such hindsight right here, such hindsight, but. It is interesting nonetheless. So I put a shit ton of weight on this, the accumulation distribution indicator, essentially the net delta indicator. And we do see that it got a negative slope coming into January, which was this high right here. And I remember last month, you know, every, you know, everything looked more or less okay to me, except for that. And this is why I put so much weight on it because on, you know, at the end of the day, the long-term direction has been gotten perfectly by this since the dawn of time for Bitcoin. And it's turned back down again, and we are maintaining a negative slope here for the last couple of months. And that would very likely outline my 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 bias as as you know more downside here, um, to be quite uh, to be quite blunt. So um, so so over this next month, I do think that Bitcoin probably has some more down, and we and we won't see a low put in until this gets a neutral slope again, at, at least potential potential. Um, so yeah, I'll be I'll be hanging on to that right now. Uh, anyways, let me get rid of this. Well, you know, I, I I very rarely look at that, but that was one of the biggest concerning factors coming into last month, and this is why uh, it took over. And I just want to show the validity of it long term. Um, okay, cool. So let's go look at some of the other majors because perhaps they are showing uh, different things. Maybe something more obvious that we don't see on Bitcoin. Usually not the case, but sometimes it does happen. Looking at Mr. Buterall over here, let's put back on all the major moving averages. And what do we see here? It looks to me like Mr. Buterall probably comes back down. If Bitcoin, if Bitcoin makes that next move to 8150, you're going to see Buterall down around like 200-ish region. Um, again, in danger of getting a very nasty cross between the 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential moving average rate here in uh, this coming during a nice consolidation. So actually, contrary to what we see on Bitcoin, this would be an example of a very good cross if it does happen. So if you do see like another day of sideways and then down, this is this will officially cross. And this is this is going to be the perfect example of <laughs> Of a very efficacious cross, and we're probably going to come down further, um, maybe towards. Well, I, I won't talk about it right now. They're going to going to piss off too many people. Um, but looking at the weekly, I I don't like the weekly at all. Um, the weekly is confirming hidden bearish divergence, and assuming that we don't close back above maybe like uh, 255, 260 today, it will confirm hidden bearish divergence, and we're going to see weekly stokes cross the downside from this region at that level as well. Which, by the way, historically speaking, has not been good for Mr. Buterall, and I'd be looking for at the very least a test back down to the 21 which is at, which is currently sitting at uh, uh, 190 but personally speaking I do not think that it'll hold I do think that it would bounce um, that'd probably be akin to the Bitcoin at like 8150 ish region um, but after that at, you know after after a bounce maybe back up to like 215 220 I'd, I'd be looking for more downside usually when you have hidden bearish divergence it will bring you down to the range lows and in this case the range lows would be in this sort of portion right here probably somewhere around this trend line whichever you know and, and as time goes on the trend line does rise but you can see that longer term the you know the 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 good thing about it i suppose is that it is creating higher lows and you know essentially making an ascending triangle on lows which we've seen many cryptocurrencies bottom out long term on these formations so i would say that um you know if you know if it did come back down to this trend line that could perhaps be a very very massive uh, long term uh, long term opportunity, uh, and I would put the odds on that. Um, although we won't really know for a while, but uh, but again, uh, this rejection coming in at perhaps the worst time, so uh, so not good. Um, anyways, let's go check out Mr. Uh, or sorry, no, not Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Litecoin. How's she doing? And, or sorry, let's actually go down to the lower turn time frames on this. I want to see if there's any sort. Of, yeah, still uh, descending triangle right here as well. Uh, next move probably brings us yeah down to like low 200s. It looks like uh, Litecoin. What's Litecoin doing? 
All right, and, let, and let's talk about point of failures as well. If uh, if Mr. Buterol does start closing four hour totals back above 231, two, two, let's just call it 230, make it easy. But it's really like 231 and a half. Uh, if, it, if it were to do that, then perhaps we do have a bear trap here and I'd be looking for a move, a quick move up to 242. That's gonna be Bitcoin as well, getting above about 89.50, setting up for that next move to, uh, to 9150, 9200, where things actually can change. But as long as we're below there, still bearish, or sorry, bias is bearish as far as the uh, higher time frames go. Uh, uh, Litecoin, what's Litecoin doing? Same thing. Death cross on the four hour confirmed, all coming during it during a during a redistribution consolidation pattern right here. And we are gonna see momentum officers turn down as well, although they are a little bit shaky here to be fair. Uh, more importantly, let's go to the daily and see how the daily is shaping up. The daily is about one day from confirming both an open and close below the 200 simple. Any sort of a daily total close below $59 today. And I would say that the next move is very, very likely to, likely to bring this one down to about 53 bucks region. Uh, same thing here, you know, this uh, very nasty cross between the between the red 10 simple and the yellow 21 expansion average during this consolidation that's going to be a very efficacious cross not only that we are about to get a if, if this does get another move to the downside we will get a death cross on the daily uh exponentials once again between the green 55 and the purple 200 and that's probably going to give it feel to likely test a long-term trend line very similar to what we see on mr buterol as well in fact a very 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 similar charts on the macro let me just kind of pull it out right here but you do basically see potentially an ascending triangle being formed on the long term here so if it did come back down and meet this trend line you know whenever that timing does happen I would perhaps look at the uh, at the very first pass as, as a long term um, major long term opportunity. Uh, more importantly than that, and just kind of boil this one down, if the weekly closes anywhere below the two hundred simple, which is currently sixty two dollars, I you know it might it might rally back up a little bit next week, but I would be very 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 confident in saying that this is going to come much further down to like below fifty most likely. Um, longer term, same thing here. Weekly Stokes crossing down. Weekly RSI breaking the exponential rejection of the bullish control zone. Not fucking good. Probably does base out long term in this region down here. You can see it kind of like cradling it out, but uh, but that you know that can take some time, and that would be good long term. You know, it would it would confirm this as one massive reaccumulation. Um, uh, but that's going to take a long time. Uh, anyways, uh, let's move on. Let's check out what some of the other majors are doing. Perhaps we can go check out XRP. XRP is doing exactly everything that Litecoin is hinting at doing, but a lot sooner. And any sort of a weekly deal to close below 25 and a half cents is going to be really bad. Um, if we if it closes below 24 cents, even worse. And I'd be looking for a retest of the prior lows at about 20 cents and probably lower over time. This one has been the fucking dog in the market, not following as much as the other ones. I've apologized to the, to the XRP army out there, but have to call a spade a spade. And this one getting rejected from, from closing on higher highs a couple weeks ago, uh, between this point and this point right here was the major signal. And guess what? We did confirm a major hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point, which is exactly what we're in the process of confirming for Litecoin, Buterol, and uh, well, not necessarily Bitcoin. Um, but uh, but again, you know, similar type things. And I do think that at the very least, it'd bring it back down to the low side of the range between like 19 and a half to 20 ish cents. And then we'll talk about it from there as well. Um, so fair enough. Uh, let's go look at uh, Link. Per, uh, Link. I want to see how Link's doing this week. Link being the darling of the market. Let's see if it is still going to be the darling. And so far, so good. I'd say any sort of a weekly close here above four dollars is going to be considered relatively good. Um, I do. Uh oh. I don't like that rejection yesterday. We did hit our, we, we actually did hit our target, which is really, really good. Um, at, at like 430, 435, or actually no, my, my target was four and a quarter, 430-ish region. So we actually overshot it by a little bit, not bad. Um, but it's losing its footing here once again, rejection on the, uh, you know, on the RSI. I'm, the daily, the daily doesn't look that good. The weekly looks pretty good. Let's go see how the monthly did. Monthly is really good. Okay, you know what? It probably does have a little bit of downside here. Maybe back down to like three and a half, three forty. But I look at that as a major opportunity. This one's still bullish long term. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, link still, still the best chart by far. Uh, long term, we do see that we have something resembling like a massive bull pennant here. We can make a measure move on this one as well. I'm curious what it would be showing, just just for my own uh, information. And we've already hit the target on it, so okay, fuck it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I do think you know it's it's going to take a little bit of time to resolve itself, but uh, I'd look at any sort of a move back down to like in, into this region right here as a major opportunity. Um, uh, once again, it, it it still is the best chart in cryptocurrency land. Let's go check it out versus Satoshi's though, because I think that one's a little bit more interesting right now. And where is my link Satoshi chart? There it is. Um, eh, kind of a rejection right there, to be fair. 
Uh, it probably does come back down to like 46,000 Satoshis, but still overall long-term quite good. This this weekly is setting, if, if this weekly closes anywhere above 45,000 Satoshis, I would be looking for continuation coming in like the next month. It's very, very strong still, still more upside to come most likely, um, depending upon the weekly close. And I, I, it looks really, really good to me. Um, I have no major risk with this. With this. Uh, weekly, weekly momentum also is looking very powerful here. Uh, weekly RSI looking very, very good here. This, 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 this is still the darling of the market. And we'll look at Tezos as well. I think that this one might be losing its footing a little bit more than what we see on uh, on Link. So Link once again maintains its pull position. Yeah, okay. Tezos breaking that critical area that we spoke about yesterday. I'd be looking for a move back down here towards like four or sorry two two fifteen maybe two ten ish region. Uh, weekly, weekly's not we you know we, weekly's not terrible. Um, so I do think that longer term it's probably still bullish. Uh, monthly is very, very good. So yes, you know, if it does come back down to like low $2 region, I, I would look at that as an opportunity as well. I do think that longer term, it's still headed towards about four and a half, uh, four and a half bucks and probably more than that. It looks good long term, short term, medium term, probably going to probably gonna experience some downside here. Um, we already looked at gold. We already looked at, uh, actually, I want to talk about gold a little bit more. Um, Okay, gold had a catastrophic close on Friday, uh, confirming a monthly, what do you want to call this, massive doji dildo, uh, confirming a weekly massive bearish, or it's actually not a bearish engulfing, but it does not look good. And this one, I would be very comfortable being overall bearish on it as long as it's, as long as it's closing higher time frames below about 1650-ish region. I do think that may be coming into Monday. It's going to try another rally back up, perhaps back back around like 1615, 1620-ish region. But any sort of a rejection there is going to set this one up for a pretty catastrophic move to the downside long term. Um, I think that we've seen the highs in gold for a while, uh, very, very likely. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll leave you off with that one. Anyways, go back into Bitcoin, start to wrap this bitch up and uh, and send it off. Um, <clears throat> okay. Alrighty. As far as the monthly goes, I do think that we're going to get a, a rally back up to the 10 simple, which is right around 8,900. That likely ends up being a rejection though. So if we do get a bear trap here today uh, or tomorrow, and we do move back up above um, 8,800, that would be my signal that Bitcoin is going to test 8,950-ish region. 8,950 should be a nice resistance. If it does get a, if it does start closing two hour or four hour dollars above 8,950 or 8,900, I'd look for extension to 9,150, 9,200. That's where the higher term time frames can actually change. But until that area is actually taken out, my bias remains to the downside, and I'm not the biggest fan of this price action. And I do think that uh, you know more or less, if we get this next breakdown, uh, 8,150 to 8,200 is where I'm looking towards. Um, once again, I will I will bring out. To the good old bias busting chart and ask you the same question. Would you long this? <laughs>